Well, welcome back to Dungeon Master's Corner. Today, we take a deep dive into tack boards and red string territory as we explore what happens when theories about a game sweep you away. And by you, I mean me. Welcome back to another episode of Dungeon Master's Corner. Today, we are going back to our Tal'Dorei game. Not Tal'Dorei, Wild, Wild Mount game. Same world, same timeline, different parties, and different adventures. Different continent. Different continent, all together. So, this is the one you may remember where we have myself playing Archie, uh, our good friend Tom playing Charles, Matt is scra uh, Scratch. Timber. Wow. Matt is Timber. Very similar to Scratch, but different. This one has a child that is prestigious in what they do. <laughs> And our dear friend Andrew playing Bevan. And Bevan is a very special case. Very special case. So now you may be wondering why I'm doing so much talking when Nicole is the dungeon master here. Nicole, why am I doing so much talking when you're the dungeon master here? Because... Due to our recent story and what's going on, no, Brian is not taking over. However, certain puzzle pieces have clicked into place. I'm, I'm attaching the red string to my push pins as we speak. Yep. Because when Andrew made Bevan, he gave me a complete blank slate for a backstory. Nothing. I could do whatever I wanted. I could do whatever trauma. And I am a monster. I ran with it. And the especially puzzle. Especially if I'm right, you are. Especially if you're right. And the last session or so, Archie has started putting puzzle pieces together. And I, I for one, think that you need to share your theories about Bevan. Okay, people, so here's what's going on. We are currently in the Feywild because some bullshit in Bevan's past. He is supposed to be looking after some kids he doesn't remember, and we have to find them because if we don't find them in a month, an archdevil is going to rain hell down on the planet. So, we are currently there, and we are running into Bevan's last party, the group of ventures he traveled with prior to meeting us. Now keep in mind, he doesn't remember any of them, but they remember him. But they remember him as Berwin. They do remember him as Berwin, and Berwin's an asshole. I like Bevan better. I respect Bevan more. And let me tell you something. The day Archie respects Bevan, the person he disrespects must have really fucked up. <laughs> Love you, Andrew. But Archie's an asshole. Yeah. So. We are traveling with the, some of these people because... These hags they were supposed to kill years ago are back, causing problems yet again. And Archie's sitting there going, if you had just done your job right the first time, this would be a problem. How are you not able to finish off Fae in the Fae realm? There must be something wrong. Maybe they're not Fae. Maybe they're not hags. Maybe there's something else. Maybe this. Maybe that. Maybe that. And then Archie starts to start... He starts understanding something. He knows these people. He's heard these names before. Not just the hags, but the adventurers, the heroes. There was a book that he had picked up at one point when he had to learn common. Remember, he's from Aeor. He's from a thousand years ago. He, he needs to, to brush up. These are characters in a book. Characters in a story. And so Archie goes, oh, so this must be the story of how they did it the first time. But something was wrong. It wasn't just that we were meeting the same people. We were meeting all of the same characters. And they were characters. It was almost as if we were reliving the story, but missing one major component. And that component, that linchpin to the story, was Berwin. Because he didn't exist anymore. Now he was Bevan. 
What if this little pocket dimension of the Feywild that we're in isn't really a pocket dimension of the Feywild? It is literally the book that I read. We are living the story of Breowin's life without him. And so the story is falling apart. The people don't understand what's going on because none of them are real. Because Bevan isn't real. He came out of nowhere. He just started chatting with the party before Archie was even part of it. Back with Asher and Thinius. Exactly. So we didn't put these pieces together because we didn't know him then. But he had no history then. He'd been wandering for months with no direction. He's just a storybook character that got transplanted out of the book. But the thing is, we know he worked for Tasha. Archie's got an answer there too. Tasha loved the book. Tasha decided to have her grandchildren be watched over by the hero of her favorite story. But he fucked up so much because Barrowin is awful. Bevan is fantastic. I hate Barrowin. <laughs> I don't know how he was anyone's favorite character. Bevan for life. I, I've, I've spoken to both of them. Uh, Archie created a machine to pull souls out of bodies. It, it's a whole thing involving the Lux and don't worry about it. But when I did it to Bevan, Barrowin came out, so I was actually able to talk to his old self, and he's an asshole, and I don't like him. You just have differing views, that's all. He's a snob, and he was willing to sacrifice way too much. That's what heroes do. They will sacrifice the sacrifice you to save the world, but a villain will break the world to save you, and that is where Barrowin and Archie differ. This is it's very much a Captain America versus Iron Man. I would just cut the wire thing. <laughs> I would just cut the barbed wire. But also, to be fair, the sacrifices he made didn't even work. One, because he's not real. Two, because now things are worse because of what he did. Though, to be fair, he basically handed me a god-killing weapon, so I'll all say thank you on that one. That's a story that's, for another time. That's though. a different story, yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> the day that I started writing that down is the day that you started to just wake up in a cold sweat, I'm sure. Oh, yes. <laughs> but this is about Bevan, not yes. about my plan this to kill the This is about your theories, that he is a storybook character. This is just reliving the story. Yeah. This pocket We're reliving dimension the story. isn't We're... real. Because we keep meeting these same people. They're going through the same events. And the thing is, we actually have... I have this really neat magic item that was definitely a mistake to give me, and I will never give it up. <laughs> Which we're going to talk about on a different episode called Gods on we Speed will. Dial. Which is upcoming, so don't you worry, folks. Um, it allows me to cast Sending to people back in the other world, in, in the main, Prime Material Plane. They have access to the book, so they do research in the book and send me back information. And as I'm comparing the information, it just keeps making more and more sense. And now we have a collection of people in the party who are dedicated to this being true. We need Bevan to not really exist. We need to be walking around the world with a book character made flesh. Because, to be fair, for Archie, that means he's now longer the most fish out of water of the group. At least you belonged in that world at one point. At one point or another, to be fair, I don't think Bevan cares where he belongs, he just is. And let me tell you, if we could be more like Bevan in real life. Imagine. But I digress. Being able to just be? Yeah. Ah, we should all aspire to Bevanhood. <laughs> I declare the Church of Bevan. That is a horrifying thought. Let's not. Forget your problems. Stop caring about shit. Go punch things. It's a great church. <laughs> it's still located right next to the Kobold Soul in Hopper. Kobold Soul. 
Yeah, children are just dead weight. Let them go. So what if their witch queen grandmother and demon grandfather will destroy the world? It's not your problem. No, no, no. It's not your problem if you don't remember it is. But yes, yeah, so that's my theory of Bevan. That, that's where... I had a different theory at one point. I'm actually trying to remember that theory. I was going to say, the, I'm the, curious what the other theory you had was. Well, I, that's the first one I said um, to... So, Mercyon. Mm-hmm. I had, I had told her my first theory, and I broke her mind with that when she was, like, having a, a something of an existential crisis. That you were... And it was like, that you were reliving everything. Right, right, right. It was just, um... Just straight up we were in the relive. Fey, yeah, they're in the Feywild, and the Fey are fucking with them. They're putting you in a time loop, I think, is what I, my yes. original thought was. Time loop. You're being... Yeah, tortured with a time loop. And she's like, oh my god, this is terrible. I'm like, don't worry, don't worry, I figured it out. You're not in a time loop. Oh, you just god. don't exist. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Archie has a way with women. And that way is make things worse. Yeah. Yeah. That is an accurate statement for how Archie deals with women. Well, to be fair, that's how Archie deals with everyone. That is a valid point. Archie believes in one thing. Science above all else. If you can't handle it, tough shit. But the implications of Bevan being a storybook character brought to life brings questions of what other books can we bring to life? What else can we do with this? And what if we got magic that could do it and I wrote my own book? Dun dun dun. It looks like Archie has a new way to get his home back. Which might take a lot less time, to be honest, depending on how long it takes the magic to develop. And since I put one of the greatest and most powerful mages in the world on that task, simply by suggesting it could be done, I have high hopes. Menowin does good work. Flattery will get you everywhere with her. Um... <laughs> Archie knows that. Archie knows how to play people. He's yeah. been taking lessons from Charles. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> he actually has been taking lessons with Charles. We we have established that. Because, holy shit, my charisma's low. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that is just a theory. I think I'm right. I think, or at least I'm on the right I'll, track. I will say, for our listeners, there are elements of what the theory is elements in the theory that are that hold water some that are a little questionable and some that uh may have been a plot hole that i then plugged up because it fit very well <laughs> i'm glad i could help you fill the <laughs> plot holes but to be fair regardless of whether or not i'm right the magic that i suggest can exist so even if I'm completely off base, Archie still comes out on top. And that is what it is to be Archie. Always finding a way to come out on top. So thank you for joining us for this theoretical episode of Dungeon Master's Corner. I've been Nicole. I've theoretically been Brian. <laughs> and we hope that your enjoyment of this episode was not theoretical. Bye! Bye! Thank you for joining us for another episode of Dungeon Master's Corner. If you'd like to support us, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash reliably chaotic to help me buy some more red string. I ran out, and seriously, I was just getting going. You can also drop us a line on Twitter at reliably chaotic. We'd love to hear from you.